By 1947, events outside Japan were starting to change the course of occupation policy. In China, communist forces led by Mao Zedong were routing the armies led by America's ally, Chiang Kai-shek. In Eastern Europe, new communist regimes emerged. Many influential Americans feared that the Soviet Union, led by Joseph Stalin, was directing a campaign to spread communism throughout the world. We have permitted Soviet Russia to continue a policy of persecution and slaughter, dooming our neighbor nations and ourselves to reap a rotted harvest of appeasement. This choice must be God against Stalinism. George Kennan was the man who wrote the American blueprint for containing communism. He looked at Japan and concluded that the occupation reforms were paving the way for a communist takeover. To Kennan, the occupation had brought democracy, but not prosperity. He saw the weakness of Japan's economy as fertile soil for the growth of communism. As the Cold War became apparent, then there was this powerful argument that uh, we can't afford to weaken Japan any further because Japan has got to be a bulwark of, of the Western defense system. And all these reforms better, just better stop, and get down to the business of rebuilding the Japanese economy. To change the course of the occupation, George Kennan flew to Japan. He was followed by the Undersecretary of the Army, William Draper. A former investment banker, Draper was known as the Wall Street General. Draper tried to persuade MacArthur to stop punishing big business in Japan and start building up the country. I personally talked to Draper, to Kennan. They had no vision of a future Japan except uh, a, a strong economic giant and a, and a barrier to communism, but there was no idealism in it at all. It was nothing about democracy. SCAP's reformers had pushed economic democracy by busting up big business to make a nation of small capitalists. But that meant taking from the rich and giving to the poor, which upset conservatives in the United States. What a landslide. Reports at Republican headquarters in Washington soon show that it's bigger even than expected. The Republicans won control of Congress in, in the fall elections in 1946, and there was some concern among conservatives in this country that the land reform, that the uh, breaking up of the Zaibatsu, that the purges were having a negative effect on property rights. And they were complaining that this was much too radical, moving in the direction of socialism. Washington's growing distrust of MacArthur and the SCAP reformers soon began to circulate in the U.S. press. It indicated that the occupation was in the hands of mindless leftists who were uh, making Japan very vulnerable to communism, chaos, perhaps even anarchy. Inside SCAP, a division was growing between those who wanted to maintain democratic reforms and hardline anti-communists who wanted to build up the country. The division in the headquarters became known to the Japanese and they took advantage uh, of that division of opinion uh, to try uh, to sabotage the reforms that were suggested to them by the government section. Inside MacArthur's headquarters, there were these new dealers and other leftists. We saw these people and worried that they were trying to turn Japan into a kind of socialist country. Afraid of general strikes and other signs of chaos around us, we moved to keep Japan from turning red. Japanese and American conservatives joined forces to undermine some of the earlier reforms. They sought to rebuild Japanese big business under the guidance of elite bureaucrats and politicians. It was called the reverse course, moving away from what Yoshida called the excesses of democracy. It was a pity that the emphasis was shifted when it was shifted uh, because 
There was no internal menace from the Communist Party in Japan whatsoever. In 1948, the United States officially adopted a new plan, build up Japanese industry. Japan would become the workshop of Asia in the fight to contain communism. Shigeru Yoshida rejoiced. A month after the occupation changed course, so did the course of Japanese politics. In 1948, Japanese voters, looking for stability and economic growth, swept Yoshida and the Japanese conservatives into power. They are still in power today. By the end of 1949, Japan began a new purge, the Red Purge, to root out the communists Scap had set free four years before. There is a bird called the Tanchozu. It's a sacred crane with a red head and a white body. That bird was like the Japanese labor movement. The leadership was red, but not the body. The rank and file workers were rather moderate. So when the red head was chopped off, the labor movement lost its radical direction. Japanese managers also used the red purge in their battle against labor unions. I was not a communist, but I came close to being purged because I was a union leader. During the Red Purge, many people who were not communists lost their jobs simply because they took a hard line toward management. Official policy toward labor unions had changed. When the Toho Movie Union tried to occupy the studio and run it themselves, the police broke down the studio gates. They were backed up by American tanks and airplanes. With 